Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. This board was sat in the garage when I moved into the house and I've been meaning to do something with it ever since. It looked like an old dirty scaffold board with a few bits of wood nailed onto it that I just needed to remove. My plan was to use it to make that welly boot rack that I did a few weeks ago. So I started by marking it out into the sizes I'd need for that and getting it roughly cut down with the jigsaw. The board was cupped, so I got one surface planed and then an edge planed as well. But with it cleaned up, I could see that it wasn't just an old bit of scaffold board, it was a really nice bit of pitch pine under all that dirt. And far too nice to just be painted. So I put these boards away for a few weeks and then I came back to them. As you can see, I've even changed my shirt. I've taken them out to the garage where I can use my old 12 inch Martico saw. I can run the edge that I've planed along the fence and trim off the other one to get them parallel. Now I want to resort them so that I can get two boards out of each piece. I start off with quite a shallow cut going all the way along and then I flip the board over and do the same from the other side. I can then raise the blade a little and keep doing this until finally I'm all the way through the boards. With all the boards cut in half, is then back into the workshop to run them through the thicknesser to clean them up and bring them all down to the same size. So I don't know if I said but this is going to be a wooden chest to keep some camera gear in. I get the ends of the boards trimmed up then I set the stop to the width of the boards. Then I can get a couple of pieces cut and these are going to be the ends of the chest. I'm going to get the four sides of the box joint together using finger joints. So I swap out the blade to my 5mm grooving blade, link down below, and I have to put the old insert back in. I can then set the height of the blade just above the thickness of the material. I get my box joint jig installed on the saw, and then I get the boards put in place and clamped. I'm going to try cutting two boards at one time just to speed up the process. When I've got all the cuts made on the two sides of the first boards, I can then get it flipped around and get the first cut put over the peg. The boards for the shorter sides can then go up against this, clamped in place, and then I can start making the cuts. After the initial cuts made, I can remove the first boards Move the little ones over the peg and then just keep going until all the teeth are cut. With all the fingers cut I can now get this box put together. So I start by getting some PVA wood glue applied. I use a small brush to help get it spread out between the fingers. Then I can get the first bits pushed together. And then it's just a question of going around each corner and doing the same. With the last joints pushed together, I can then have a quick clean up of any squeeze out and then get the clamps on, pulling everything tight and checking it square before leaving it all to dry. After a few hours, I get the clamps off and then I measure how big the pieces need to be to make the lid and the base for the box. 
and then I can get them cut down to size on the table saw. All the sides joined together, the top and the bottom of the box aren't quite flush, so I get it clamped up in the vise and then take my low angle hand plane just to smooth things out. I then start by getting the base installed, so I get a bead of glue put round and spread out on the bottom of the box. Then I get the bottom put in place. To hold it in place I've got some little 1x20 panel pins that I just hammer into place all around the bottom of the box. Whenever I cut finger joints I always leave them a little proud on purpose and then I come back with a random orbital sander and sand them down flush. So the top of the box is quite thin and I don't want it to warp so I'm going to add some supporting pieces. I use a few of the off cuts, get them marked down and rip down to the size I want. I get six pieces cut so they can go on the top and the bottom to act as feet. To make them a little more interesting I tilt the blade over to 10 degrees forgetting I have a zero insert plate in and then I can just cut a little more angle on both ends of these pieces. I can now get these glued and tacked into place on the lid of the box. This is kind of reminiscent of old wooden ammo cases which I think have definitely inspired the design for this. I get the case flipped over and three more pieces installed on the bottom that match up to the ones on the lid. I have some of these hinges left over from where I made that boiler cabinet at the beginning of the year, so I'm going to use those on this. These are so simple to install as you don't need to cut any mortises for them. They line up with those bracing pieces on the lid so I've got more to screw into. To secure the lid I already had this antiqued brass toggle catch and I get that screwed on lining up with the centre bracing piece. The one thing I had to purchase were these antiqued cup pull handles. I position them on the sides, mark out where I'm going to need to drill a couple of holes to get them bolted on and then I can get those holes drilled out. They come with these bolts that you can just snap off to the length you need. The bolts then go through the chest from the inside and can get screwed onto these cup handles. Old ammo boxes would always have markings on them, so I'm going to do the same, but just add my own bit of branding. So if you saw last week's project, you're probably going to guess what finish I'm going to use. And that's my new Badger Wax. I'm just going to apply it with a brush. It smells great and it really helps bring out the details in this pitch pine. I leave it to sit on the wood for about 10 minutes and then I come back with a microfiber cloth and buff it off. Now I always worry about having camera gear in the workshop as it get dusty or damaged but now I can get this soft insert put in this box and everything's going to be nice and secure. And that's it all finished. Thank you to my patrons, thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos.